It's devotion time again. Nice to have you with me. One of the most well-known scriptures in the Bible surely should be John 3 verse 16. And you can quote it. Basically, most of us know it almost out of our head. For God so loved this world that he gave his only begotten son. That whosoever, and everybody talks about the whosoever, will believe in him will be saved. And so on and so forth. And you know, God so loved this world, even the most unlovable and unforgivable people. But how many of us have actually gone on to read the next verse? And this gives me the opportunity to talk about the greatest rescue plan of all time. You see, in verse 17, it says, For God did not send his Son into the world to condemn the world, but to save the world through him. He did not condemn us. He wants to save us. The word condemn is actually to reject or to pass sentence on you. And on Sunday... I shared about the woman that was caught in the act of adultery and how the, the scribes and the Pharisees were actually condemning her, but at the same time trying to see how they could get to the point where they would condemn Jesus if he would have said something contrary to the law. But we would never do that, would we? Now, I've been studying the book of Job in my own personal time for some uh, weeks now, and I have come to the conclusion that Job had three friends, and what they did was only condemn. I mean, they carried on and on and on and on. Even when Job himself said that I have not sinned in any way, and now along comes Eliphaz, and he says the following. Eliphaz says to him, he says, Your sin prompts your mouth. Your sin prompts your mouth. And he goes on to say, You adopt the tongue of the crafty. And then Eliphaz says, Your own mouth condemns you, not mine. Your own lips testify against you. Now that is so, so condemnatory upon people, knowing that Job, in the book of Job says, having experienced everything that went against him, he did not sin. Now, you and I, we're not like Eliphaz, are we? Or are we? You see, it's so easy to point a finger and to say to yourself, I wonder what skeletons he's got in the closet now that things are going wrong in his or her life. And we're so quick to say, oh, we use this religious term, he's backslidden. I wonder what sin he did that he hasn't confessed before God. And you see, we're so apt to judge and to condemn. I'd like to share a uh, true story about a minister that was asked by one of his congregational members to please go to the local pub and to rescue and to save her husband that went on a drinking binge. Something or other happened at home and he just lost it and he went to the bar, the bar and he started to drink and drink and drink. Now I know the minister personally and I know the situation and I know that he was a pastoral type of a guy and he said of course I'll do this and he went to the local pub, went inside there was a bit of a confrontation, and he managed to get the man who was drinking himself into a stupor to come and to stop drinking and to come out, get in the car with the reverend, and to go home, to go home. Now, the minister was much shorter than this big guy, and of course, the big man was already drunk, and he was stumbling all over, so the minister put his arm around his waist, and the drunkard man threw his arm around the minister's shoulders. And they both stumbled out of the bar onto the main street. Can you guess what happened? The local gossiper passed by in her motor car. And before you knew it, the whole town was talking about how terribly disgusting it was that the minister 
and this guy were drinking together and came out of their drunk as what you can call and got into their cars. Now, imagine how vital that would have gone if they had uh, cell phones and WhatsApps in those days. You see, we're so apt and so quick to be able to point fingers to somebody else, speck in somebody else's eye, but we forget about the plank in our own. So the point is, let's be very careful from ref and refrain from trying to judge and to condemn and to remind ourselves, John 3.17, God didn't send Jesus to condemn. He sent Jesus to save and that is what we closed off with on Sunday, the scripture of the woman that was caught in the act of adultery. And the Bible tells us very clearly, Jesus straightened up and asked her, woman, where are they? Has no one condemned you? No one, sir, she said, neither do I condemn you. And then Jesus declares, go now and leave your life of sin. My encouragement could be perhaps a little bit of a warning. Let's be careful to whom we point the finger, to whom we accuse, we are actually condemning somebody. Let's not do that when God through Jesus has not condemned me, but has saved me and he saved you. I'm grateful for that and I trust you are as well. Father, thank you that you save and not condemn through Jesus Christ and his blood on Calvary. We bless you for that. Amen and amen. Until Sunday, the Lord bless you.